Hey there guys, how are you? It's been a long time, but it's January and we're talking about a January... What are you doing here, Chris? I live here. No, you live under my bed. You're a demon spirit. That's true. That or I actually moved five minutes down the road from you. <laughs> That's what happened, guys. I oh. actually... I... It's <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm five minutes from your house. I was at a crossroads in life. I didn't know where to go. I was like, I'll go somewhere where someone knows my name and it's a safe place. And uh, so I moved to uh, Akron, Ohio to be with my good pal, Stuckman here. The bromance is real. Hello, everybody. Uh, you could have either moved to Cheers, where everyone knows your name. Exactly. Or yeah. here, where a couple people <laughs> A couple, two people. But my hometown is only three hours that way, so yeah. it all worked out. Yeah. Plus, it's... It's very cold and miserable, but we're making videos, and this is this is gonna be fun, man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. More opportunities to do stuff together, yeah. collaborations. We'll do more stuff. So we'll do more videos on my channel. Uh, obviously, some stuff here too. So oh, yeah, so look out for it. It's January, the most horrific time of the year for films, where they go to die. And was Insidious the last key any good? Well, we'll talk about it. So, John, what was Insidious the last key all about? Well, it was more or less the same thing we've seen three other times, except this time, Lynn Shay is the star of the movie. It's an origins prequel movie focusing on why she is like she is. Mm -hmm. She's a parapsychologist, I believe. Okay. And uh, scary stuff happens. All right, so, Chris, uh, this reminded me of something. This is January. It's a horror film. The last horror film we talked about last January was one of the worst movies of the year, The Bye Bye Man. Or one of the best. Whichever way you want to look at it. I'm just going to go with the worst. Oh, I mean, it definitely is, but it was amazing. <laughs> and, and the question I have when I went into this film, it is January, it is a horror film, does it belong in January? And my quick summary, not to leave you guys in suspense, is it does. <laughs> it, it, it does. I, I was not a fan of this movie. Now, I love the first Insidious. I really like the second Insidious. The third one was instantly forgettable. Mm. And I feel like the trend with this franchise is they progressively get worse and worse with each installment. Yeah, um, for me, I'm about eh, three and four similar vibes to me. I feel like they're interchangeable. It's okay. just me, though. I mean, I didn't hate this movie. Uh, I think it's a lot better than most January horror releases. Uh, when I went into this movie, I was honestly like, I was like clenching. Like, I was just yeah. ready to be completely violated by this movie. And I left mostly satisfied with the character work they did with Lynn Shay, the backstory prologue I liked. There were certain things that happened towards the end where they try to tie it into things that didn't really work for me. I think this movie's biggest problem is, and I've noticed this since the second Insidious film, the lack of James Wan, he's what tied these movies together and really gave them substance and really held them to a higher standard. And without him, I've noticed the last two films are the worst of the franchise easily. He's definitely amazing. Like when it comes to like understanding creepy visuals and and things that are just unsettling. Now let's talk about Lin Shay, who's the main star of this film. Lin Shay is a uh, very old lady. She is. <laughs> and the scariest thing when I think about Lin Shay isn't anything to do with the Insidious franchise. Have you ever seen the movie Kingpin? Yeah, uh, I don't remember remember it very well. Do you remember this? <laughs> Yeah, they should have just put that scene throughout this film, just looping it over and over for an hour and 43 minutes. Um, because this movie is not as terrifying or suspenseful as I wanted it to be. And sure. it's not hard to make a scary movie. It's really not. And when you look at the first few Insidious films where they have the shadows and the, the camera slowly pans in and that, that suspense starts building, this film surprisingly only does that once or twice. I can understand that. I... I think the movie's fine uh, for, for what it is, for the fact that it's a fourth movie in a franchise. I'm used to like Freddy's Revenge type things. I'm used to... I like you know, Freddy's Revenge. What? I hate that movie. Why? It's awful. But it's so bad. Yeah, Wait, Freddy's it's really Revenge. bad. Are we talking about Freddy's dead? Uh, no, Freddy 2. Oh! Ooh! Yeah, yeah that had some erotic undertones, to say the least, yeah. with the gym coach and the shower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you, like, a little bit impressed by the fact that a Hollywood movie released in 2018 
a big franchise is entirely led by a 74 year old woman. It, it, listen, it is impressive. It is kind of cool. Lynn Shay did everything in her power yeah. to hold this movie together. She is really good. But she could not make up for the poor script in writing this movie. There are some scenes where she's trying to deliver these lines mm -hmm. and they're so terribly written, you cringe at them. Oh, I agree. And I couldn't believe like this movie got made. And speaking of cringe, <laughs> Speaking of cringe, I think you might know where I'm going with this. You're talking about the the the, the humor. Yeah, the oh, humor yeah. by the uh, her sidekicks, specs, and whatever, whatever the other the creepy, horrible, cringe worthy. But not only that, there's so much like there's two younger girls in this film, mm -hmm. and they both just like pretty much address these two girls with their eyes throughout the entire movie. And some of their comments, like one or two pervy jokes, okay, I get it, right? Yeah. But the whole movie is nothing but that. And I I'm just like, it. I feel like a crime against humanity is being committed. I hated it. And yeah. that, in my review, that was the, the, the yeah. part of the film I, I mentioned as, as the worst was that humor. And those characters have been throughout the whole franchise. And even in the first one, they were like, eh, I don't know if they're humor. Yeah. They've just, they've kept trying every single time. Yeah. And this might be the worst in regards to the humor. Uh, there's a kissing scene at the end. I mentioned in my review where he, yeah. just, he just kisses her all of a sudden. And I was like, what? It's awkward and like, against the law. I think these, <laughs> these, these are like high school girls and these are like 35 year old dudes. What's going it on here? It was very strange. Yeah. And I remember, and, and the girls are always just like laughing like, oh, this uh, is so cute. Huh? And I'm like, oh. No, I don't think so. A little predatory there, guys. You might want to back off. It's the scariest thing about this film yeah. because it's so realistic. Definitely the worst part of the movie. Actually, you know what, Chris? I think there's something else worse about this film. Okay. For me, I would say this is probably one of the worst paced films I've seen in a very long time, or at least in a theater. Hmm. This movie starts and goes, stops, loses its way, stays on the same thing too long, reiterates itself, saying the same thing over and over, and doesn't really go anywhere. It, it felt like in an hour and 40 minute movie, there was 30 minutes of substance, everything else was dragged out, and halfway through this movie... I was bored. I really? was, it just felt like it didn't know what to do with so itself. You, you really didn't like it. And my biggest letdown is, from a creative standpoint, a story standpoint, I felt like they had a missed opportunity. Because where this location takes place, it's in an old house where Elise Rayner grew up in, and it's next to a reformatory, which is a prison. And I was really hoping the majority of the movie would take place within this prison. I that thought be cool. that would be amazing. Yeah. What a great setting. In some ways, honestly, like if that prologue had just continued and shown her as an adolescent and then like maybe getting a little bit older mm -hmm. and then eventually that would have been cool because I actually do think the setup was pretty good. Like a teenage Elise Rayner. Just yeah. show that origin story. Sure. We don't need the modern day part of it. That could have been a little better. Yeah. I think we just wrote a better movie right there. Like it's easy when you see it, you know. It, it, yeah, it when is. you got a blank page and you're trying to create something. But let me when, ask you this. Yeah. You like films? Sure. You directed a short film? I did. What's the name of it? Auditorium Six. Check it out. <laughs> Listen, if if you read the script for this film, could you not have easily said, "Why don't we not do this?" Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I go, to, I went to this movie, and I sure. left thinking, okay, all right. I'm, I'm never probably gonna... I might watch it again in 10 years or something. I, I, um, I could never... That's the question I always ask myself when I'm watching movies. Mm -hmm. I say, could I watch this again? And in this movie, I could never watch it again. It was a chore to watch the first time. Uh, but you know what? I'm gonna give Insidious the last key. Ugh, I'm gonna give it a D+. Plus. <laughs> Can you, can you blow up the D plus? <laughs> <laughs> that would take too much work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so that's my take on Insidious, the last key. For me, it belongs in January where it is. Uh, but yeah, definitely look out for more videos with me and Chris Stuckman here. I'm looking forward to it, man. My creative juices are flowing. Good. They have been dead down in a pit for a long time, but now I'm climbing up to the well like Bruce Wayne to go back to save Gotham City. Good. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> as always, guys, make sure you check out Chris's channel. I'll put the link down below. And uh, make sure you subscribe. That way, I can see you guys next time.